Hi, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this little mini book. Now, this is made for some, from some product that we had earlier on in the year, but the one I'm going to make is using some current designer series paper called Woven Threads, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, this little book opens up, you've got a page here. I'm going to alter it slightly. I'm going to make the matting layers slightly bigger and wider. And this was my prototype and the hinge isn't brilliant so I'm going to modify that but just to give you an idea of what I'm trying to work to so you've got a page it opens up and then this flips then you've got two more blank pages again next pages flip and so on the papers I'm going to be using are the papers from the woven threads which is in our new annual catalogue which came out in April and if you've shopped with me, you will have a copy. Um, these are some of the papers that I've got left. I haven't got many left. Now, this all came about because I've received some stamping storage recently and it all came in boxes. And the boxes are not glued top and bottom. So when you open them up, this is folded flat how it looks. There's one seam where it's glued. So if you look inside to find the seam and then you prise this seam open, this is what you will be left with. From this packaging, you can make two of these books. Each one of these panels is six inches high. This one and this one are six inches wide. This one and this one are five inches wide. The covers to make this book are six by four and a half. So you've instantly got your height and you just need to cut each one of these panels to four and a half wide. You will have a section here where you can cut the spines. The spines are six inches by an inch. <coughs> Excuse me. So you'll be able to get two spines. So from the whole of this packaging, you'll have the elements to make two albums. Obviously, if you've not got this packaging, just use anything you've got. <clears throat> Our designer series paper comes with a piece of card in the back. You could cut that up. If you've got any chipboard, anything like that, you can cut that up. Once you've cut your packaging up, you're going to have two pieces. Now, obviously, I've already used one part from that box to make this. The other part that you're left with will have the little notched, thumb notched area. But don't worry about that because this is going to get covered in card. And by the time you get your pages in, that little bit you'll not, you'll not even know is not there. So you'll need... Two pieces, six by four, and one piece, six by one. That's going to create your structure. And then to cover that in, you need two pieces of card that are seven and a half by eight and a half. And then to make your spine, you need a piece that is six and three quarters by five and three quarters. On the eight and a half length side, you're going to stick a piece of double sided tape. Make sure you give it a good burnish down. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to release the tape part of the way. I'm using my scoreboard because I know it's got straight edges. So I'm going to line this piece of card up along the seven and a half inch edge. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to butt it up to the edge of the adhesive and making sure it's lined up, pushed up here and press it down. So that should now be perfectly square. 
and then if I just hold that in place I can peel away the tape and that's now stuck together. I'm now going to bring in my pieces of card. This inch piece I'm going to sit in the middle here and I'm just going to leave roughly the same amount of gap at the top as there is at the bottom and then the next two pieces I'm going to bring in to line up. Now you want, got a spare piece of board here, you want to place a piece of the board, whatever board you're using, in between your two sections and you want that width and a little bit more otherwise your book won't bend properly. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue this piece down. I'm using Tombow for this but you can use whatever you like, tear and tape, you know a, a good strong double sided tape. So I'm just going to position this in here And then I'm going to position these two on either side so that they all line up. But as I say, you need at least the width of your board and a little bit more or else it won't fold. Right, so while that's drying, I'm going to do the spine and then I'll show you how to put this all together. So get your piece of card on the six and three quarter inch side, put it in your scoreboard or your trimmer with a score, score blade, whatever you use. And you're going to score this at one inch, one and a half, two, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, three and one quarter, three and a half, four, four and a half, four and three quarters and five and one quarter and five and three quarters. So I'm going to fold on all of the score lines <clears throat> and I'm just doing them by hand for now and then I'll get the bone folder on them in a few minutes when I've explained how to put this together. So I'm not sure how well you're going to see this, but basically you've got two half inch score lines or two half inch sections and a quarter inch, then another two half inch and a quarter and so on. You're going to put some adhesive on one section of the half inch so this is a pair, so you'll put adhesive on one section. This is another pair, you'll put adhesive on another. I'm going to do it with tear and tape. And if you use a little block or something, you'll get a nice neat edge. So that's how it's looking now. So on each of the two half inch sections, you've got a piece of adhesive. So basically, these two sections are going to stick together. So you're going to fold like that. You're going to have a half, a quarter inch gusset. 
Then you can have another fold and a quarter inch gusset. Then your next section. It will make more sense in a minute. And then your next section. So it's going to look like this. I'm going to remove the tape and stick that first section together. Now I'm going to burnish it with the bone folder. I'm going to remove the second piece. Unfold those two together <clears throat> and again just crease and work your way along and then push those two together. So that when you have it all stuck together You have this, and this is going to be the spine for the album that's going to hold your pages. So now I'm going to bring this back in, and using my bone folder, I'm just going to score all the way around, just roughly. I just want to help the card to start bending around the album. So I'm going to use the bone folder, bring this over, I'm going to do the same on the opposite end, just bring it up with my hands, fold it over, make sure your edges are lining up, then you know that your album's square. And then do the same on this. Bring it up. Just give it a little encouragement with your bone folder. So now I'm going to cut across the corner just to take some of the bulk away. If you bring a corner inwards and make sure this is square and press, it should give you the angle for cutting off your card. So that when they fold in, they should match up or use the piece you've cut off as a guide. Whichever works, really. it should come in like so. pretty much all lined up. On here I've got a little bit of a gap. So what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to put a little patch in. So if I put a patch in the corner there, when they line up, you're not going to notice that. Now again, you can use double-sided tape or you can use wet glue, whichever's easiest. I'm going to use Tombow. 
I think. Just for speed and it, it should hold. And just be careful because it can get a bit messy if you're using a wet glue. Okay, so that's how it's looking now. So what you want to do is get a bone folder, use the biggest end. This is mine off my scoreboard and just press in those areas where the gap is between the board. But be gentle because if your adhesive is still wet, you can rip your card. Just do it very lightly or wait till it's fully dry. And then just tease up so that's going to be your album. Now your spine is going to get glued in here. And you only want to put, for now, you only want to put adhesive on the three sections that are glued together. And you're going to sit that centrally on that centre spine and centre it top and bottom. Only putting it on these three areas. Don't use loads because it will spill out, but you want enough to hold it. Just make sure it's squared up and then just hold it until it grabs. Obviously these pieces are not stuck down yet, these end bits, so just you know, rub in between the spines with your bone folder or something just to make sure that glue takes. Because obviously you've not glued, you know, these down yet. You're just gluing that centre section. And then what you want to do is again, get a bone folder and where we, where I marked these areas here where the gap is, you want to press down on there as well on either side. Because these have to be stuck down, but you want it all to bend. So just draw your score marks in and then give it a little fold. Just so that when you fold it up, it's going to fold together. So I'm just going to apply some glue on here now. And then, you know, keeping that in that position, press that down. This is the tricky bit, really. After this, it's easy. It's just... Um, matting and layering and, and gluing. Again, make sure that that's in the right place and then press that down. And that's your little album with your spines for your pages. So these two pieces are four and one eighth by five and seven eighths. And these are just going to sit on the inside cover of the album.
So that's how it's looking now. So I think I'm going to use terracotta tile. So I've got a piece of A4 card. I'm going to cut this in half at four and one eighth. And then I'm going to cut this at five and three quarters. So that's four pieces at four and one eighth by five and three quarters. I'm going to take another piece of terracotta tile and I'm going to cut this at three and three quarters by four and three quarters. And you need four of those. Okay, now, on the three and three quarter side, I'm going to score at half an inch. So I'm using the half an inch on this side of my trimmer just to save me, get my, save me getting my scoreboard out. So half an inch on each one of these smaller pieces of card. Just put those on one side. I'm going to bring in a piece of designer series paper and I'm going to cut this at three and one eighth. And if you don't know what the eighths are, I've done a video on understanding the ruler on my channel. So if you go and have a look at that. So three and one eighths, I'm going to cut that at four and five eighths. And you need four of those. And then for the bigger matting layers, you need a piece that is five and five eighths. So you'll get it out of this one piece of 12 by 12, or if you've got six by six, you can use six by six. And what I might do actually, I might cut another piece in a different pattern. So four by five and five eighths, and then I can mix and match my patterns. So I might swap out two of those. two of those and then I can use whichever sides I want. Okay, we'll start with the smaller sections. Fold and burnish your half inch score line. These are going to sit on here. So again, I'm going to use wet glue. And there's a very small increment of edging on, on this. That's going to sit like that. Now, I'm not going to stick the papers on these yet. These are going to stick on here. So on the half inch section, I'm going to apply some glue. And then line this up with the edge. Centralise it as best you can or wherever you want. It doesn't have to be central. You could put one at the top and one at the bottom. So 
So that's going to be one of your flaps. So two go on one side. Or however you want to do them. You could score them along the top and have them lifting up. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to put these side by side and try and get them pretty much in the same place if I can. Without getting glue all over my fingers. So that's going to be two of your pages. And then repeat with your other two. Okay, so they're the main four pages now. So now I'm going to do the matting onto these four, which is this. So I think I'll put I was going to use the other side, but I don't think I will. I think I'll keep them like this. I might swap them over, have them like that. I'm going to use snail for this. And again, there's only a very small increment. So just centralise it as best you can. Okay, so there are my four pages. So the matting layers for inside these small sections now needs to be yeah, the same as the front. So four and five eighths by three and one eighth. So again, I'm just going to stick these in now. So I'm going to have one pattern on one side and one pattern on the other, I think. Or should I alternate them again? I might alternate them actually, do them that way. So I'm just going to stick these on there now. So now we're ready to start putting in the pages. So you want to get them in the right order. So one with the flap coming from the left, one with the flap coming from the right, one with the flap from the left and one with the flap from the right. I think that's how it's going to be. So you're going to open up your first flap and this is going to sit on there. You're going to put adhesive along this half inch section. It might be easier to use your wet glue. I'm just going to turn it around and I'm going to position it so that the edges line up with the spine. And then place it down.
then this one is going to go on there. So again, you want some glue on the spine. And again, sometimes it's easier to push it. You're not going over the fold of the spine. You want to just butt it up to it because you still want this to be able to bend. Okay, so that's two pages. Then you're going to skip a section and then you're going to do these two and you're going to put those in there. I was going to alternate my pages, but I've decided not to. So I've got this pattern together and this pattern together. And then these just need some pattern paper on them now. Five and five and five eighths by four. So I need one, two, three, four. So they'll do for those. I could even use the plain side. And then for the front and back cover, five and three quarters by four and one eighth. front and back covers and then for my spine that was an inch so I'll do seven eighths And just by putting this little piece on it will help to hide the join in the card and it obviously just makes it look a little bit more decorative. And then I just need to stick in these. So I could either do them plain or patterned. I might do those patterned and maybe do a plain one there and a plain one there and a pattern one on the back. Okay, so this is what I've done so far. So this is the front, the spine and the back. And it opens up and what I've done I've added some scraps of the paper just to break the plain page up. Then this opens out. I've done the same here. I've just put one at the bottom and one at the top. These were just scraps that were left over from, you know, cutting up the rest of the papers. And this was the reverse side of one of the others. Then you've got the flaps again. And all this paper, as I said, is woven threads, which is available in my online shop. And that's your back cover. Again, you could put some, you know, matting layers or whatever. You could even decorate this and this if you want. But then it's just ready for embellishments now or photographs or whatever, you know, you would want to use it for. So that's my little mini album made from the packaging from my stamping storage and some A4 card and designer series paper so as i say go to the blog post link underneath the video leave me a comment let me know what you'd use this little album for and if you live in the uk i will draw one winner in a few weeks and i will post this out i'll just draw one randomly from all any any comments that are left and i'll um send it out to somebody i will leave 
in the blog post a list of all the sizes and everything to make this because I know there's a lot of measurements in this project but um, this one's turned out a lot better the spine on this one is a lot better doing it the way I've just showed you rather than in my prototype which I showed you at the beginning so I hope you like the project please leave me a comment and let me know if you're going to give it a go don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. Make sure you've got the bell notification icon turned on and then that way you'll get notified when I upload a video and I'll see you in my next project. Thank you.